we're going to do is use the spectroradiometer and look at the red and blue wavelengths and take a look at that and compare the Lumigro ES330 against a uh, 400 watt, it uh, was a metal halide HID. So here we have our Lumigro 330 running full power. And let's just get a little explanation from George of what we're seeing here on the screen. Yeah, we're looking at the photosynthetically active radiation um, output of our light broken down by wavelength. And I just want to show you uh, bin 2 right here and bin 3. That's blue and red. So we have about 26.5 micromoles of, bl of blue. Then that's between the 450 and 480 nanometer wavelengths. And then in bin three, which is the red, we have about 170 micromoles um, of red and between 620 and uh, 680 nanometers. Yeah, we've got bin four and bin five, and that is near infrared. near infrared and infrared. So bin four is the near infrared and bin five is the infrared. That's right. So this is a true depiction of what's going on with the light. Wavelength by wavelength, really. Yeah, and it's relevant because, you know, oftentimes you look in the industry and people talk about lumens. What's the lumen output? Well, that's a totally um, irrelevant comparison of light, especially when it comes to plants. You know, plants are looking at PAR in specific wavelengths that are matched to their, their pigments. Chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, phytochrome, so on and so forth. Right now we're running this Lumitech on the super lumen setting. Of course we have our spectral radiometer, 32 inches from the lighted source, just as we had on the Lumigro 330. There's our 400 watt metal highlight. This is an I Photo Lux metal highlight. Look at we're about 32 inches. Of course, this is our sensor. It's fiber optic. It's a fiber optic sensor. Hooked into a very expensive spectral radiometer. And here's the readout. This is live. Now, George, before we were looking at the Lumigro 330, and of course you're explaining bin one, bin two, bin three, bin four. Do you mind just doing that again, real quick for me? Sure. Well, each bin represents a different uh, wavelength region. And what we're looking at is bin two and bin three. Bin two is the blue, and what we're seeing is that it. These numbers are a lot lower than the They're ones we were looking lower. at before. That's right. Um, we're getting about 11.2 micromoles of blue with between 450 and 480 nanometers. This bin two, this is the blue nanometers area. This is the blue area yeah, measured right. in nanometers. And I'm seeing it's about 11 point something. It's just like quite a different world from what we just saw with the Lumigro 330. What, what were we putting out with the Lumigro? We had 26 micromoles with so the Lumigro. So this is actually less than half. Yeah. Wow. And we know blue is an important wavelength for, um, you know, veg vegetative. Hold on, can, can we give the viewers at home a real quick depiction of what's really actually happening? So over here we have a 330 watt fixture. Over here we have a fixture that's not at 400 watts, but is super driven on the super lumens, which I'm guessing is about 440. Let's just call it 400, just to give it safety and security there. So at 400 watts, our metal highlight, powered by a digital ballast, is half of the amount of blue output from what we were getting with the Lumigro. That's pretty amazing to me, okay. Yeah, well let's go on to the bin three, which is a red uh, wavelength between 620 nanometers and 680 nanometers. Um, here, here with this metal halide light, we're getting about 28 micromoles. Oh, that's, a, that's all right, but on the Lumigro ES330, we were putting out 169 micromoles of red. My God. That's not even comparable. Of course, we're running a metal highlight, so you know this isn't optimized for red. The spectral radiometer is pulling uh, from the 600 watt high pressure sodium bulb. Um, so again, here in bin 2, we're looking, that's the blue spectrum between 430 and 480. We're getting, oh, rounding up about 11 micromoles of blue. 
And then in bin 3, we've got the red spectrum, and that's 620 to 680 nanometers, and we're getting about 88 micromoles. It's obviously a lot higher than the metal highlight that we had in this HID fixture before. Um, where were we at with the LumaGrow 330, the 330 watt fixture? Now, folks at home, remember this is a 600 watt HPS we're comparing it with that we're looking at right now. Where was the LumaGrow 330, George? Yeah, in the blue, uh, the LumaGrow had 26 micromoles, uh, so that's more than double the amount of blue using the LumaGrow enhanced spectrum. And in the red spectrum, uh, the LumaGrow had almost twice that of this 600 watt high pressure sodium. We had a about 170 micromoles. Wow. So the LumaGrow 330 is outperforming in those key nanometer spectrums that we're talking about that gives the true plant response. The LumaGrow is actually beating at only 330 watts, this HPS bulb running at 600 watts. That's pretty amazing. All right. <laughs> so, so, so George, you know, we, we talk to a lot of growers on the street and they're going to ask me, I know I've seen the testing, I've seen the meters, I've seen what they put out, but I want to know what is it really yeah. doing for plant production? Um, I know you've been talking to growers because I know that you guys have a whole plethora of different people that you guys work with. So just tell me what you're hearing on the street. Yeah, a lot of home gardeners are reporting um, amazing, uh, really good results. They're, they're really happy with the simplicity and elegance, the energy savings of the ES330 and the 165. But more than that, they're really happy with the yield that they're getting. Um, you know, home, home gardeners on the internet have uh, are posting some of their results, and the reports that we've seen are over, are overwhelmingly positive. So we're really excited about that. Um, we've got some basil growers, commercial growers that love using our lights. They say our lights are producing some of the bushiest basil that they've ever grown, um, and they're delighted with the vegetable production. Um, for their leafy greens, and then we have these are uh, businesses, not people that just grow basil for themselves. That's that's right. These are businesses that sell commercial basil and herbs to um, so you cost know, and production is obviously that's right. a, a main topic. So that, they're using this for actual production. That's right. That's oh, right. Wow. And they're having great results. Wow. Well, that's some information to you folks at home that are still skeptics. They're growing plants under these units. They're turning out beautifully. Go ahead and try one today, especially if you're the gardener that has you know, multiple lights and you're looking to swap out for different fixtures. Put one in production, you know, test it out. Yeah. 30 watt unit, we have the 165 unit. Now the 330, what kind of footprint are we looking real quick? Uh, we're looking for the footprint, you mean coverage? We, yeah, what kind of coverage area? Yeah, we're, we're uh, you know, for a three by three area, they're okay. great. You so can even li light a four by four, but we recommend a three by three coverage area for, for the max plant production. Yeah, that's right. And the 165? The 165, um, you know, two by two. Okay. You know, or, or uh, um, vegetative starts, okay. small starts, yeah. Okay. Really great for that. All right, and is there anything up and coming with Lumigro? Do we have. I'm putting my ear to the railroad train, yeah. the train coming. Is there anything new on the horizon? Oh, there, there are some wonderful things on the horizon that we're really excited. So, uh, you know, stay, stay tuned and uh, keep your ear to that. The railroad. The railroad and... Uh, There'll be a train coming. Yeah, there's a big train coming. Right on. Well, thanks for the yeah. information. We appreciate your time.